Okay, how about now? I think um, this Streamlabs OBS thing is uh, kind of a hacky thing. So I was just talking to myself. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for joining. Um, I think you can hear me now. Let me know if you can uh, if you can hear me. I'm dealing with this Streamlabs OBS. I'm moving away from a very expensive software that I was using. So let me know in the comments. Thanks, Matthew, for letting me know that the audio wasn't working. I can see the output is coming now. All right. So anyway, what I was saying earlier when I was just uh, showing you my screen is that um, we have our lab set up, the security onion, and then um, our alerts are coming. Today's machine is going to be called Sedna. And you can download it from Bound Hub. Once you download this machine, you can put it in VirtualBox, just like what I have here, and you can download it from here. It's considered a medium machine, but I think it's an easier machine. The reason why I'm choosing this is because I was looking for machines that remind me of what I'm going through practicing for the OSCA CP. And this one is, doesn't appear to be on some people's list, but uh, it looks like it's a really good machine. So that's why we chose it for today. So. Thank you guys for joining. Otherwise, uh, let's get started here with this machine, Sedna. I, um, as I get ready to take my exam in a few weeks here, I also moved to a new Kali Linux machine. This is the latest version of Kali. Uh, this is a custom Z shell theme that I have that actually shows me where I am. So I'm, I really like this one better than the other one. 38.87, that's our victim machine. Our victim machine is on 192.168.38.87. One thing that I've been doing, getting ready for the OSCP is to come up with a methodology that is actually very solid. So I do use some tools like um, Auto Recon. So we can do something like this. 87. And Auto Recon will actually go out there and start scanning the machines. So this is what most people have been telling me that is the most efficient way to actually attack some of these machines. So what Auto Recon is doing is um, it's going to run an Nmap scan, a full TCP scan, a UDP scan. Uh, it's going to run relevant scripts. If it finds port 80, it will run it. So the reason why I shy away from showing you guys here is because I, I also want us to uh, do things manually. So I'll let Auto Recon run here so I can show you at the end what it looks like. It's very efficient. I've been able to hack four machines in one day in the OSCP labs, maybe sometimes six machines, because I'll just run Auto Recon, come back two hours later and look at my results quickly, get access on the machine without even waiting too, too much. So as you can see, Auto Recon is actually running right now. One thing that we can see right away, right off the bat, is when we run Auto Recon, this is throwing a bunch of, it's pretty much throwing the kitchen sink at the machine. You will notice that uh, we will get a lot of uh, alerts in our security onion. All this is from just the default stuff that we are running. Let me refresh this so we can see if it actually with spike look at that that's auto recon for us so by just running auto recon we trigger a lot of uh, alerts here we went from just low here now we had more than a hundred thousand events that's a lot of noise to be generating so auto recon great for the oscp maybe not great for a real pen test in the real world but nonetheless that's the first tool that we will be using today then um Let's run our usual nmap scan. nmap minus sv. I need to do them in order, otherwise my brain doesn't like them. Let's see, 192.168.38.87. So what are we doing here? We're just running nmap scan to see what's running on our victim machine. Uh, can we find a way to actually hack the machine or not? And this is also being ran by Auto Recon. Go back. 
here probably succeeded already uh auto recon also runs other tools i think it does run a nicto scan if it finds port 80. you can see here's all the things that we ran with auto recon it also runs what web and i saw what web in the c uh certified ethical hacker practical exam i don't know how helpful that tool is but every time i go to it i haven't found any useful information that I can't find anywhere else. So I tend to ignore the what web too. All right. After running Nmap against our victim machine on port 87, we noticed that we have 22, 53, 80. We have a lot of things open here. So we need to come up with a methodology to look at this stuff. Because this is a lot. Oh, we also have a Tomcat on port 8080 really good All right let's start from the top 22 with open ssh this version we'll wait for that one here we have dns we can look at this version as well but we also have port 80 the disallowed entry in the uh, robots to text hackers let's go and check port 80 So I would like to go to one and two, the one six eight, going to eight seven. Welcome to said now. All right. It looks like we just have an image. If you're doing hack the box, this image you probably just want to save it and then do um find out if there's anything hidden in it. Maybe there's some um text that is a password or something like that you can even run strings against this or other tools to make sure that you can check it so right now i just clicked on the click here to know what you need to do is pick the planet i've been trying to do that All right so these two images i know they don't have anything because when i searched through them they don't have anything so one of the tools that people have been talking about for the oscp and highly encouraged is running Nikto. So I would just run Nikto against this thing here. I usually didn't run Nikto previously. I used to just run um, Sparta. Sparta will run Nikto. This version of Kali doesn't have Sparta. So I actually have to run Nikto here. And Nikto. Nikto's usage is Nikto minus H. Then uh, the victim that you want to go for. And Nikto will go through and search. The good thing about Nikto is it's clean. It's a clean output that you actually get here. Uh, if there is local file inclusion, you actually see Nikto display that, hey, this thing is vulnerable to local file inclusion. If there's a version of some software that is well known out, out there that you can find in Exploit DB, Nikto will show you. It also does some dirt busting which is also very interesting because uh, I like Durbuster better, but uh, Nikto will also do some Durbusting. So for example, it found this slash files directory here. This is what I would find with GoBuster uh, sometimes, but Nikto would find some, some of them, but not all of them. GoBuster will find more. So still run GoBuster against this actually. While wow, Nikto is running. Let's find Nikto. Uh, Shit, shit here. Let's run our go buster. Do we want this web content though? Yeah, let's run go bust with that. Uh, sometimes it, telling go bust which extensions to look for makes things easier for you. For now, I'm not going to specify any uh, extensions. 87. All right, so go buster there to that. We're going to uh, big dot text. This will take forever, but let's do it anyway. This is the most thorough way to do these things, right? So go buster is going to go on our website to try to see what directories are there, which ones can we read, and then uh, we should be able to see by the status codes here. But the, I also like to do this just to make sure that I don't, I don't miss anything. 
right. Go past is running in the background. Here's Nikto. Nikto found uh, such files, which we need to go and check out right away. So let's go to slash files. All right, so slash files here, it looks like, let's see, users. You cannot see users. And it, what is this? Uh, it looks like it's a troll. This will never load. GIF. Capture. Nothing. V demo. The demo site. Log, post. These are just images. So slash files, uh, more images. So this is the slash files that we found here. Might be interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Slash system, I'm pretty sure <laughs> this will not show me anything. Otherwise, this will be too easy. And not that interesting. Yeah, forbidden. All right. Read. Um, this is the default Apache page. Let's skip that. License.txt. The license.txt files uh, and install files are very interesting because then we can see whatever version they're talking about and what system this is from license or things like that. So as you can see here, we now have uh, 2015 Builder Engine. Whatever that is. Hey, Said, welcome, man. Thanks. Uh, good to see people from Malaysia. I wonder what time, what time is it in Malaysia right now? Over here is uh, 9.34. That's 10.34. Right. So it, this license file is telling me that we have this engine, builder engine here. What I've learned is every time I see a version of whatever it is that is running, I always go here, type exploit. I like them to come from Git. Mostly because if there's better um, versioning out there. So this is exploit DB. So it looks like I'm in the right one because I saw some write-ups for Sedna there. All right, so Builder Engine 3.5. This didn't say 3.5, did it? I just said 2015. I guess that's the same thing. Just to make sure that I have peace of mind, I'll go here. They have a release. Okay, so this is the software that we're going with. I don't know what it does. I was, I was hoping to see their release. Okay, know that from 2015, this was a correct one. All right, so here's an exploit that we found from exploit DB. It's a PHP file, uh, unauthenticated, unrestricted file upload. This is huge. This is exciting. Unrestricted. That means that I can put my PHP reverse show there, no problem. So we'll do a post in the plugins section here. And it looks like it will put this test.php in the files. So remember, we came here, we actually have the files directory. So it looks like if I, whatever I upload, it will come in these files directory here, which is good. So all I need to do is, uh, do a post to this thing. So, uh, oh, this exploit is not doing anything for me. I can create uh, a custom post request to the server, to this URL here. 
and good thing will happen. We will get a reverse shield. That's what I mean by good thing will happen. Or we can reuse whatever they have here. Download it. 40. We can reuse whatever they have here. Remove the PHP extension and have this HTML load. All right, let's go and do that to see if that actually works. All right, so here is the PHP file that we downloaded from Exploit DB. All right. Looking at this thing here, all we need to do is change this IP address to our victim IP. Dot eighty seven. And then once we do that, how can I access this PHP thing? My, uh, Four zero three nine zero. Okay. I'm thinking, what can I do with this? This is a PHP file, but I want to do a post. This thing will not work. Or oh, where is it? This. No, 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 no. No, I don't want to download it. Let's move it. Let's move the extension. Let's let's move that. I'm thinking I uh, should be able to do this. Should be able to do this to was this file contains HTML. I just want to that HTML file to load. I think and it will give me a, a, a file upload. Yes. All right. So this just loaded the HTML code from this thing here. If you read it, you will notice that that's exactly what it's doing, giving us the ability to. Oh, I moved it, of course. Now it's just an HTML file. It's it's, give, it's creating a form that we can upload. We need to upload things to this location here. We could have created a custom curl command for ourselves. Or we just use what they have because the exploit already has it. So this gives us the ability to upload a reverse shell to our victim machine and do whatever we want. Or what better shell to upload than our trusted friend, um, Pentes Monkey. Actually, I think I know. I have a tools folder where I keep that. I keep a few of my tools that I've been really enjoying using uh, lately. And PXXX is one of them. Uh, Juicy Potato, Lean Peas, Privilege Escalation stuff in here. This is the one. This is from Pen uh, Pentest Monkey. And the two things you need to change are this IP address here and this port this happens to be the correct one for this kali linux machine so i'll just keep them there come on 
How hard is it to escape a file? Hide anything. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, first start a listener. Was we are using port five five five. And then let's open the browser. Oh, I just sent nothing. Browse to our root directory. And then I need the tools. sh.php. Let's send that. I didn't see any errors here. So that means that that little upload. Uh, form worked and the only way to know is let's go to our files here and refresh sh.php is there so if we execute this sh.php our reverse shell here should come back if everything works so if it hangs like this and it's spinning that's good news that means that it's doing something and we come back here we are in as our good friend ww data okay with this, let's just stabilize the shell a little bit. Make sure that it actually does what we want it to do. With that, I'll go to here. Let's use Python and export our term. Make sure that our, our lives get easier because I don't like these limited shells here. I mean, we can still use it, but why would we do that? We can just make our lives easier. A lot of people actually do more to their shell than what I do. I notice when I watch other people, they really want their shells to be as stable as possible. Mine, I just need you to, to clear and I need to move around. So once we're in a set now, we have done some things here. We need now to um, escalate our privileges. A few things that you can do. Since we don't have a password, we, can, we cannot run sudo minus L because we don't have a password. However, we can do things like we can look for SUIDs, which we should right now. Use this. All right. I don't know what this L as WD is, never seen it. Yeah, I don't see anything else except for, I don't know what this is. LP admin, interesting. So there's an issue ID on this. I don't know what this is. I would probably have to look it up. Then uh, after that, uh, you name as A also. In this case, it looks like we are running a really old version of Linux for sure. Really? It's a kernel, uh, the kernel exploit. Come on. Okay. So this kernel is actually vulnerable to. Yeah, we can do privilege escalation using this thing. Okay. Wow, that is interesting. Let's get uh, keys there. Let's use Python 3 minus M, HTTP, 80. We can do, what is the IP for Kali? It's this one. Let's go get lean piece to our victim machine. So I just set up a Python simple HTTP server. 
tiers that we get through this IP address. How do we spell lean peas? I'm looking for do we capitalize lean peas? Oh, so okay. Let's get into a victim machine and see if we can find something interesting. I like kernel exploits, they're easy. But at the same time, I think that um, if we can, so well, I just made this one ex executable. If we can do it, let's do something different. Let's run LinPs here. Let's send the results to previous.txt. LinPs will might take a while. And uh, this is just a tool to go through our system, check uh, for any ways we can get to root. And it's a wonderful tool. The results can be a lot, but at least you will, if you go through them diligently, you will actually see something interesting. All right. So while lean piece is running and it will tell us if we have a way to become root on the system, let's go back to our results here and see. Okay, so this is where we ended last time. We were at more than 100,000 events because we ran uh, some tools. Let's just refresh this. Uh, instead of last 24 hours, I would like to change this to last one hour. Refresh that. So here is what we did. 400,000 events were generated by the attack that we just did just to get to user. That to me is a big deal, right? Uh, in a real production environment, if this happens, someone is waking up in the middle of the night to figure out what's going on here. The company will be targeted by people who are not afraid to make noise. <laughs> that means that something serious is happening because this is way beyond the norm. That's the first thing. We can look at the alerts, see what did we do over the past hour? A lot of NMAP stuff. Nothing interesting there. Suspected PHP injection command. I think this is from Nikto, if I'm not mistaken. I think we saw it last weekend. Uh, but that's what Nikto does. A lot of these are false positives. They did find something, they just thought it was something that is not. It, they don't need to be ignored, but at the same time, uh, they actually are not the correct stuff. So this is probably Nikto trying to test for AC Shadow again. What I noticed is that Nikto gen does trigger a lot of uh, these web application uh, rules that are within Security Onion. All right, let's check the first one. This is the suspected PHP injection attack. Pick one. And I'm looking for the user agent here, Nikto. So nothing interesting there. If we expand, we can see that Nikto is actually trying command injection, see if it can, if it will work on some of these directories. No, he's trying um, logo for inclusion in this case, right? That's what Nikto looks like. So if you run Nikto and you are hired by a client to test the environment, maybe you shouldn't, especially if you want to hide. And here is possibly another Nikto alert. Yeah. So every time I run web application, um, using Nikto. I expect all of this noise from Nikto. We can also see GoBuster in there as well, in DearBuster, but uh, that's what Nikto does. Let's go and check to see if uh, BNP is finished. Right, so it finished. You can try to scroll up here, but as you can see, I'm not seeing much. 
However, I, I was search saving my results in uh, this file here. This way I can actually manipulate this file better. All right, so here's um, lean peas. We have a lot of results and this one requires a lot of patience and actually focus. After a while, you kind of know where to focus on, but um, you need to go through all these results here, figure out like okay, what is actually happening. It does find a lot of really interesting things on the system. I'm just going through this because I'm not seeing, I don't remember seeing anything interesting here. Found some users. IP is inside of logs. Data. Yeah. I think um, when I looked at this earlier, it, it found, chi I don't know how to say it, chi root kit. Text. I actually found that. It was it to which kit? Okay, let's grab uh see if we have cron tab. Can actually do a grab minus i cron tab. This is the file I wanted to see. Yeah, so you can go through Linpeace results. I don't want to go through them right now because. It'll probably take me a long time to get to where we want to be, but that's a fi that file will have the information that we need, including the fact that this kernel is uh, vulnerable. So looking at this here, oh, really? CD into that and run parts report. All right. I was hoping to find something more interesting here, but let's go with this one. The name minus A, the one that we found earlier especially with this Linux version here. Let's see if we can find something from the internet. Let's do like Linux. Search exploit did give us the results, right? But I, I like to find them from exploit DB directly. This is a local privilege escalation for 3.31. That one should work. And here's a video for POC for it. And this is a common one. Just let's just get this one. Get, get with it. It's not compiled, of course. Dirty cow, if you haven't used dirty cow, I think this is a variation of that. Multiple multiple versions out there. So it's 372. Nine two. Let me check if I have GCC here, which I do. So let's let's take this and uh, compile it on our victim machine.
go to download it's 37292.c so let's do that here's our IP address victim machine that we get HTTP I cannot type today and then we need to get name of the file this let's compile it on the victim machine and see if it works I mean I I don't mind doing kernel exploits I think they're fine I just I think if there are other better ways to do exploits, I prefer those. All right, so here is um, what it says. Oh, what do I need to do here? Let's compile it and using GCC, and we should be in business. Let's see. See here. GCC that dash output. Oh, there is file oh wait wait <laughs> Okay, GCC worked, no errors whatsoever. So here's our exploit. Let's run it. See, we can run it. GCC compiled it correctly. So let's do this. interesting i didn't read the exploit it did something i didn't read the exploit oh it creates something else or if okay let's go back <laughs> i was like hey how come i'm not in there so it creates this thing here think so all right what am i not doing right here this should be a simple uh thing right so we are there that's what we did do something again well I think I need to do something with this one I think I need to run GCC or something again with that one I've seen that before I'm not paying attention to my uh, chat here somebody already say hey run that no. Like seriously, this can be that hard. Looking for a POC way somebody actually used that.
right? So it says to run GCC against that. You'll be that user. Run that thing. It will go pre-compiled. We should have been dropped in a kernel according to this thing here. I mean, we should have been root. But that's not what happened. And this is where instead it actually created wait it created this thing here all right yeah it looks like why is this exploit just messing with me Maybe maybe I moved the wrong thing. It should be the same. Three seven two. Been three seven two nine two. So what the hell? All right. So we got this thing here. I'm just trying to figure out how to run this thing. Maybe I just have it in done this. Room. created a shared drive okay so here's what i'm just going to do i'm going to see if i can get a full write-up uh proof of concept for this thing because exploit db opc is not helping me much if i if i were not doing this video i'll go and watch this video right here see what they're talking about and um instead of doing that let's see let me see if i can just download that find a different walkthrough of that export This is a lot of them. We don't want that. This one would be interesting. Let's use this one, uh, Data Cow Ninja, maybe. No. They use Data Cow here. I'm just looking for the exact steps for that one that I had. Forget about that. Let's let, let's move on. Yeah, we should we should have a Zoom uh, session. Definitely. We should definitely have, have a Zoom session so we can uh, check things out. I'm just looking at the chat here. Okay, this one is different. All right, let's try it with this one. Was well, that's the same kernel? Three three eight two four. Otherwise, we can go to a different one. Yes. Get 
thing go here and get my body edit here three three eight two four let's try this one maybe the other one is faulty or oh, i just don't know how to run it Go for I've gotten so comfortable getting stuck. Doesn't it doesn't even phase me sometimes you have like, oh it didn't work great do this one this is see that one that's output I like to name them something funny So this one didn't work either. So what this means is that this kernel exports for whatever reason. Don't like to work. Don't get me into I see everything from there. Exploit If this doesn't work one more time, I'll just go to something else. I think there should be something else that actually works. Is what I was uh, hoping. 3.13, that's what you're looking for, and we want privilege escalation. There is a local privilege escalation using Metasploit. I can try that. I think this is the one that we just tried. 33824. Was that 33824? Let's see. Yeah, that is the one that we just tried. We haven't tried this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments here. Just checking out. Let me know what you guys think was i'm curious um if this will actually work if i'm just what this kernel says is vulnerable so what's going on with it okay forget the kernel for now let's go to let's Let's go back to our privilege escalation results. Let's check. Because the other two that I found in that it does check rootkit. Program is oh, really? My I'd like to grab that. All right. 
So if you look in our privilege escalation results, we do see that in Etsy, we do have this check root kit tool is in here. there the binary it should be under C so we should be able to run this thing and see if it works so maybe curious, like, well, how did you find out about that one? I've seen it on a, another machine in Pound Hub. So we do have uh, a lot of write ups out there for local privilege discussion using Check Root Kit. I like full write ups. shows me how this thing runs and you can read through this so if we run this if we run it it should say we, it needs privilege escalation let's see We should be able to run it from here. Needs root privileges. Just any saying. So it says we must run as root. So the file update two. So we need to create that. Some root. This is just me going to the internet, finding out okay, how do I exploit this thing? Then just follow it step by step, make sure that it actually works. So make a sudo user okay, and here is a Python script that they we they made. So we can use their Python script or we can do it manually. See if we actually succeed here. So we need to go to the temp folder and make the update. Directory. Once we are in there, we need to create that's not a directory, that's a folder. Get it Look in there. Mine is not in this location. There are other ways to actually get root using that too. But let's modify this Python script here so that it actually works for us. Where we get uh, a little bit of the Python out of the way. Here in my downloads folder. You can tell I, I, I've not done this. Uh, 
particular exploit. I'm copying code from their online blog that's not formatted correctly. I hope it runs. It says you need to wait for cron to ex execute. So we'll just do that. What I'm looking for in this piece of code is any references to paths that don't exist on my system that are different from when they wrote their uh, exploit. And one of them is right here. This will not work for me because mine is in Etsy. Might be curious, like how did I know that? Well, if you look here, this is the binary. So let's make sure that this exploit here, well, this Python code does that. If this doesn't work, I'll just find the formal check root kit uh, exploit out there. I'm pretty sure there is one. And it created an issue D binary. So this will do everything that we're supposed to do manually. If this works, I'm going to keep it for future. Wouldn't it be nice to know if Python is there before we start investing our time in the, the victim machine? All right, let's now do it. Do it now. Uh, move that a victim machine. In the name of the file, pi. Now we have checkroot.py here, running this Python. Doesn't like our indentation. Darn it. Today's, um, Today's exploits I need to need needs to be fixed. So this one doesn't like um what is it like indentation? Just I can try to fix that indentation, then I'll probably run into more Python errors. Is an if. if I keep running into Python errors, I just find the official check root kit. Uh, Next page. And I cannot edit it in here. What was it complaining about? So with a shell like mine here, you need to edit things from your Kali Linux instead of on the victim machine, because that's how things work. Oh, look how ugly this is. I should have my indentations here. You see, I'm doing these ifs and prints. This is not formatted correctly, of course. This is just raw Python code. So I can go in there and try to fix this, but I'm not too motivated to do that. The internet is full of good tools out there that I think I should be able to find something better. GitHub. This is the same deal. 
really it will send me back to the same place I just want a full exploit here. I don't want. That's the same exploit. Take rich kid local privilege escalation. Uh, I really go on page two. The sick OS machine had that. So there we go. We will get step by step from here, hopefully. So here's check root kit that we just found. Here's the snapper thing that I just went through reading. Go to temp. Okay, I'm going. To, I'm going to do it this way. I like this better. And we can add a new root user there by doing that. Oh, this is actually really kind of kind of cool. So instead of doing all those other shenanigans, this person here is saying that we can. Just edit the Etsy password and replacing the X with a hash. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be good because you guys are going to get to see me do this. So we go to the temp, echo, we change the permissions for Etsy password and edit to the update file. Give all these permissions and see that. Okay. I think we're in business. I like this better than what I was looking at. So we need to echo. Change the password for Etsy passwd. Then we can edit it. But we'll put this in the update file. All right. First, let's see what Etsy password looks like. I should have done a head. What's the only thing I'm, I'm interested in is can I change the root password for Etsy, I mean, for this one. All right, so I did do that. We need to change the password for that. I mean, the permissions for that file. It is, the time is the charm. So we did that and we verify that we actually have the, the things that we added in there we do and file is actually correct all right so since it worked here it should work for me So we did root, read that generating a new password hash using open SSL. Do that. The command is open SSL and then the password. And a sort, I believe. Let's do it this way.
just to make sure that everybody knows how to generate random string now just want to create a password using NSSL. So the command should be open SSL, then the password. Is a heading making articles. This. So I'm showing you this so you can actually just see where I find my help from. Here it is. Open SSO, SWD, I sold. Okay. Here's the syntax open SSO salt dot value then the password it's super simple let's use that why don't you just have pass one two three yeah fancy like that <laughs> so here's a hash for pass one two three we're going to need that then uh let's go back to here. Add a new line to the Etsy password file, replacing X with the previous generated password hash. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to go to. I cannot edit it here because it's actually kind of mess messed up. If we replace this X here with our password, we have technically reset the user password when check rootkit runs. That's what uh, this right up here is talking about. Let's verify that our its password actually just changed its permissions. They all died. Let's fix this shell quickly. By uh, in Python. And I like to put X term so that I can clear my screen. Important. All right. Oh, nice. All right. So first of all, let's Oh, look, we did succeed in changing the who can write to Etsy password was the permissions now changed. That means that our check rootkit worked. So all we need to do is to edit that file and we can uh, switch to user root. And this terminal is so unstable. It won't let me edit as you can see. Fine. That's fine. I, I don't I don't need to edit the users uh the root users uh 
stuff. I can just create my own user here if I wanted to. How do I um, place things? Generate a. Let's, let's see if we can try to be clear, but be clear right here. I work harder than we should, right? My motto. Let's see if we can just put a new user there to why not? All right, so now we just put our new user hacked password uh one two three. In the Etsy password location. And that should work. Ah, that's interesting. That's really interesting. I don't see my password here. So what could have gone wrong here? Could it because of that? Let's try it again. I was expecting to see the password. Maybe I don't need to see the password. I'll try it one more time. He did write the user. I didn't put my password in there. So let's echo the new password. Password. This is what uh, live hacking looks like. If you want, if you watch a pre-recorded video and it's 15 minutes, you're like, wow, that is easy. Well, actually, most of these things are easy. Just take time and need patience. Maybe I should have been smarter about that. So this thing is not smart enough. It accepted my second user hacked. And so there's two users named hacked. That's <laughs> Let's just be safe. I just created that user on my computer here, but Let's let's use our user hack here. Program is used currently stored, but what? Did I have SSH? Get that.
maybe my user does not um Hmm. But my password was in here. So what's up? Oh no, that's for WW data. Okay, so how do I get I have a user with root privileges who has access to bin bash, but I cannot switch from WW data. Let me know, guys, how do we get there? Because I created a user that is root privileges. WW data cannot switch user. I don't have sudo. Maybe. Maybe editing, but that would not have helped me either. Let me make sure that I actually put the right thing in here. I, I'm not putting it right. One, two, three. Nobody said hacking things was easy, right? That should. Oh, look, there's an error there. So I've created more users here. Good. Let's see. All right, guys. This is the easiest privilege escalation. I don't know what is wrong with this thing. Maybe I need to choose a different way. Accidentally cured me. Kill. I need to go back to my uh, OpenSSL. Maybe I created this the wrong way. I said OpenSSL pass WD user three password. Wait a second. What was I doing here? I probably just goofed off on my uh, OpenSSL commands here. No, oh, that was the salt. All right, I'm ready to be done. So let's do this one last time. Oh. 
team. Here we go. Good team. In there. I'm still going to go with the edited Etsy password file because this is already edited. Might as well go with it. If it doesn't work, I'm going to unleash Metasploit. Just capture my shell with Metasploit and use Metasploit. PMP. So we, we did, we edited this file by using echo and I don't think it's putting my passwords in the correct format here. Let's compare to what these people are talking about when they edit the file. In the Etsy file password, what does it look like? So the asterisk. So once we put the password, it should be, it should have the dollar signs and everything. So my echo command is actually not oh see. My echo command is not putting the correct stuff here. This stuff here is not accurate. All right. Let's try with nano. Ah. Same deal. And now I need to exit for X. All right, since I'm over this file here, I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to, to replace that file with my own. It's fine. I'm going to replace that file with my own. That actually looks interesting. Let's delete these lines here. They don't help us. And you set a couple lines here. This should be password, I believe. Nice. That looks like what I want. Now, let's move it. M HTTP dot server PD.
HTTP server. All right. Here is a new clean password file. So now, move. Actually, copy. B slash etc. It's going to overwrite it. Is it going to what? What is that going to happen here? I don't know. Ah. Now let's try to SSH this user hack. Problem is, I think this is the password. I believe that's the actual password. This uh, password password. Let's see. Uh, heck it that. Hmm. Not for sure I have a valid user here. So I cannot switch the user. I cannot SSH. Maybe my user hack is not allowed to SSH. Okay, what do you guys think? What are we doing wrong here? I'm looking at my comments here to see if folks can help me before I go to Metasploit. Because I am over this exploit. We have tried several things. I think we succeeded in editing this file by replacing the whole thing. And we put the password password. So this user is not part of the... Oh, you know what we can do? Maybe I, ju I just need to... Do this. See if user login is not allowed, that's why. Password. Empty, empty password, no. Can I write that file? No. Yeah, I, uh, um, let's make sure that we can write to that file. I like to write that file too. Allow me to SSH password. All right. 
So after a minute or so, that file should be edited. Uh, give me editing permissions. You know what? looking up how let's make sure that i can just add maybe ww data to do us making my life harder than it should be update so we can change the ht password we are adding ww data just to do as even though ww data doesn't have any password mode that let's see looks like I, I lost everybody here that can just say when will you give uh, OSCP very soon I won't tell you the exact date so that I don't get too nervous but very soon Now let's see if we can edit this file. Yes, we can. Now let's go and see if we can, um, what do we need to change in that file? Password the authentication should be yes, allow users. I need to add all, or my user hack. So I can echo that password authentication. Yes. That file. Do that. That file. But is that the exact way it should be? Indication yes was lowercase. Don't know if that made us or not. Would like to make sure that that is actually correct. Get that. Wow. Okay. 
password authentication i added it is yes i think up here was it somewhere oh. yeah. password authentication was commented out change to disable turn out clear text password that was commented it out So that means that I should be able to SSH is my user now. Okay. All right. I give up. Let's go the meta split route. I'll figure out why that was not working. I wanted to do everything manually, but um it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So half my endorsement, we are just uh trying I was just trying to use uh the check root kit exploit there, but it didn't work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to still use uh my script. But I'm going to use Metasploit, uh, MSO Venom to actually catch my shell. Then after that, I should be able to uh, get a ratio with Metasploit. Then hopefully Metasploit will just take care of this exploit without any problems. So I will use um, Metasploit right, right now to catch this shell. And so. Metasploit is not bad, it's just not ideal. We don't want to use Metasploit all the time. Uh, for this one, I will use uh, Mountain Handler. Use Exploit Mountain Handler, that's the command. So for using, it's, it's using configured payload, generic shell reverse TCP. Let's set the payload, payload to, since I'm using PHP, let's set it to payload PHP operator. What that? Oh, actually, it's meta operator reverse PCP. Then, uh, what are the options? For local host, since usually I use the tunnel, I like to use the actual IP address, but you can specify an interface if you want. My L port is going to be 555 and exploit. Let's start a shell here. Interpreter session started. Let's see if this is actually a stable session or not. If it's not, then I'll just use um, MS of Venom to generate my payload. Put that one in there instead of this one. Hopefully that works. While I'm waiting for that, actually, let's do that. Make sure that everything works. This one will be MS of Venom. Here's a way you can find that Venom, PHP, reverse shows. This is not Windows, this is Linux. We don't need to specify the platform, I think. We can just use any that we like. Is 
is the non-meta predator binary meta predator binary is that what I'm after the windows it's a web pay payload so windows like this one give it the parameters two three maybe we change we should change our port to five three five three because why not local host yeah the reason why i'm creating a new payload is was the Pentest monkey shell, as you can see here, it opened it, made a better shell, but it's not as stable. MSF Venom will generate a better one for us. All right, so this is how we generate uh, payloads with MSF Venom. I didn't specify a platform because sometimes you don't know. The PHP metaprater reverse shell. Let's see if what to do. Right. That did not look right at all. We say Venom, PHP reverse shell, logo port. Go that, that just sounded like why do I need PHP? Now that looks better. So if you didn't know what I just have that did there, I had PHP at the beginning here, and that didn't do things right. So now my port is now uh, 5353. Let's stop this and actually do this 5353. Right, so now, be able to do an exploit here. Back here. House. Close. One. Open. And. Back here. Refresh here. Shell. Run. Interpreter session died. Oh, I need to change this. This is not the same as the one that I used for generating the payload. One that I used was um, HP Metapreta STCP. It was different. So 
Let's use that one. And export. One more. This one is hanging this time. Lucky. Yes, we are. All right. So So we are in. So today's live stream is really good because then you learned how to work with Metapreda. If you put the wrong, wrong uh, payload, it doesn't work. You need to put it the correct one. So this is really, really great for pr practicing. So if you have been here since the beginning, what time is it now? Wow, we have been here for um, a while. Right. So let's uh, let me just exit out of here. We know the one that we want is um, check rootkit. So why don't we just uh, use that instead? I, I do have a Metasploit check rootkit uh, here. Let's see. So we have the check rootkit. Let's see. Uh, I can just do it from here. The Metasploit module goes, why not? Okay. So now we can use uh, check rootkit, show targets, set target. This is how we can just do it very easily using uh, Met Metasploit. So let's, let's, let's do it that way. Make sure that everything works. First, we need to background our session. Right, so session three has been backgrounded. Then we go back to our tech root kit here. If you are in the OSCP exam, this is what I would have done. No payload configured, default, base, netcat whatever that is right back here show targets okay, so it's on the automatic uh target which which is which is really uh good so let's do this so options Payload user is hard to check root kit. Is this going to work or is this not going to work? Let me let me run it the way it is right now. If it doesn't work, then we may need to change this path because I don't think it's the correct path. So I don't have a session yet. I was going to ask which um check root kit, but in this case. Um, why, why would we do that? So let's now go back and set session one. It was session three though. Three. Now that we have there, we have it there. Let's try it. Just do an exploit. What? So this is the easier way to do things. I should have removed my update file that is in there. But now this is actually trying to do it for me. 
So this will wait for a check rootkit to run using cron and then uh, if it runs it will come back and let me know. So let's watch this. While I'm watching this I just want to see what people have been up to here. Yes, it says, uh, was there any other services running on the box? Ah, uh, no. There was a check rootkit, and then um, the kernel is also vulnerable to Jerry Cow. But I think the creator was trolling with me. Because when you try, it doesn't work, even though it is vulnerable. So maybe there is a tweak in there to make it not work. Let's see if this works or not. It is said so realistic. Yeah, this is very realistic. This is what um, hacking is. Hours of persistence. Thanks, a few people have subscribed today. I like um, this because people do subscribe. So right now we're waiting for it to run via cron. I think it was a minute or so for it to run. So let's let's see let's wait, see if it actually runs. If it doesn't, this is not the end of the world. We know that one of these two things should work. Tado, how is it going, man? Yeah, TS said, "Do you like my one note?" Yeah. The one note is kind of interesting. A lot of people ask for that one note, but but I don't think I, I don't think it actually works for anyone except me, because I'm the one who put things in there. I know what to search for. So depending on cron tab, I think it was what a five minute cron tab or something like that. If it runs, we will be able to get it here. Let's see if it actually runs. Oh, while we're waiting for this, let's go and look for uh the actual interesting stuff. Since we did so many moves here, let's 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 look for some um data in Kibana. Let's do last hour. All right, so if you look at our data here in the past hour, you notice that there was a time when we had so many events. It's been more than an hour. All right, there. A little after 9 p.m., we did some nasty things here. We generated a lot of events, 500,000 events from our hack. That's quite uh, a lot of events here. Then all of a sudden, we were just kind of normal here because we were not doing much. We are actually exploiting our machine. I would like to look for my um, files that I downloaded. Let's see what that looks like. One of the files was a uh, so PHP. Did Kibana just find that? Yeah. So we know that someone did um, upload a file to this location. This is our PHP remiss show. We did this so many times. I was either accessing the file or I was uh, manipulating events using the file. So here is an instance where probably I executed the file to get a reverse shell. Oh, I uploaded the file. Oh yeah, this was the upload. It does actually, since it was all in plain text, yeah, you can see here, here are the contents of the actual file that was uploaded. So this is what the good guys will be seeing on the other end. Like, hey, this attacker just uploaded a generic PHP reverse shell. We need to actually do something about that. 
uh, was this Surikara or is this, this just a yeah this is a Surikara event and we just recently just like a few minutes ago uploaded uh Shell 32 if yeah so this is the one that we just uploaded we uploaded it and also executed it so i'm curious what the difference looks like this one should be an upload actually this is by time so this is a get request for that file from us this is a zik log so it, it won't show us much if it was a silly card event it will show us more this one will show us more this is the post for our file so this is us uploading it The other one you get then after that interesting i have two instances of this post here all right so the idea is if an attacker or on a network you be, you should be able to go and find all these artifacts in this case this file is actually interesting to us because the reverse shell that was uploaded to the victim machine let's look at the last two hours on all events and see what we can find there's a lot of uh, noise here because of the tools that we ran but it, the things of interest are two appear recently involved in this. This one says in network trojan. What do you mean by network trojan? From this IP to that IP. Which two shows a false positive as a trojan? Nikto. There were no evasion being run here. So Nikto shows figures that network trojan is actually not a trojan. You can see. All right. Back to here. Check it out. So never mind. As you can see, Cron did run finally. So Metasploit works. Manual exploitation of uh, check rootkit. It did allow me to edit the Etsy password and stuff like that, but I don't know what I was doing wrong. I gave up. But we, we just got the flag. So we did learn a ton today and I really appreciate everybody who stuck with me for two straight hours. I enjoy these things. Uh, like I said earlier, it's really fun to actually go and discover it teaches you a lot of patience it humbles you to attack machines so as you join me in this quest to hack machines i hope you're learning from me that it's okay to know that this should work and still it doesn't work and you sit there and are like what the heck that's why we do these live streams so we can actually things so metasploit module works metasploit is always going to be at our disposal and in the real world metasploit is actually allowed so we did get root on our machine and we generated a lot of noise i'm just going to look through some of these comments and thank you very much for everybody who subscribed tonight somehow this thing can tell me who has been subscribing i really appreciate all those who are subscribing and also those who stuck with me until the end I really appreciate it. Soon after my OSCP went to redo this whole th way I stream things and make my streams better.
but for now you get to see these raw live streams and hopefully you're learning a thing or two from me otherwise th yeah thanks Ricardo. if you watched the whole two hours you are the real uh og if you didn't watch it until the beginning just know that there was a little bit of struggle in there I couldn't find a way into the machine and we went through Metasploit, which still works. So yeah. <laughs> yes. It's important to defend the layer two of the OSI model, that would say. And it's important to um look through your logs as well. Alright guys, it's getting lit here. Thank you very much for being here with me. I really appreciate everybody who joined. And hopefully you learned something. Otherwise, I'm going back to the OSCP labs, crack a machine or two before I go to bed. And then I'll see.